portada llega gracias al auspicio de WCA, Vladimir Coca Asociados, su mejor alternativa en comercio exterior. Jardines Parque Magno, el proyecto urbanístico de mayor plusvalía en San Borondón. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos a una nueva edición de Portada. Yo soy María Cris Guevara y con mucha emoción tenemos una gran entrevista hoy acerca del progreso que viene para las Islas Galápagos. El actor Leonardo DiCaprio tiene muchos aportes eh, para el Ecuador, sobre todo con la asociación Rewild y hoy vamos a hablar con su representante, Carl Campbell, director de Islas en Latinoamérica. Bienvenido, Carl. Welcome. Thanks very much, Chris. Hi, Carl. I'm uh, very happy that we can have this conversation about what is the commitment uh, Rewild has to help the Galapagos Islands. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, so Rewild has identified the Galapagos and sister archipelagos of the Pacific coast of Latin America as a major ridge to reef initiative because of its amazing biodiversity found nowhere else. Vale. Within that context, Leonardo DiCaprio, a founding board member of Rewild, announced last year a $43 million pledge from a coalition of conservation supporters that over the next 10 years will look to complete a suite of conservation actions um, and had put this out as well as an invitation for other supporters to join this effort. What has been Mr. DiCaprio's experience in Galapagos? How he fell in love with this cause? Well, I can't speak on behalf of Leonardo DiCaprio uh, as one of our board members. However, for me, after living here in the Galapagos for 25 years, I still get really excited you know, to be walking down the main street of Puerto Iora and see marine iguanas stunning themselves on the side of the road or tortoises grazing on the roadside uh, as you cross the island. The wildlife interactions and the lack of fear of people here makes for some really amazing experiences. And on other islands where restoration projects have been implemented, the really thriving wildlife populations and just amazing scenes, you know, give us a really significant insight into what the Galapagos used to be like. And I know many of your co-workers are a little bit jealous that you're living in the Galapagos. <laughs> Oh, indeed. I'm spoiled and, uh, and I know it. What are the needs uh, of the Galapagos Islands right now? Yeah, so, like elsewhere, the Galapagos has a suite of threats uh, to its unique plants and animals, um, but also to the livelihoods of the people that are living here. And these are often the same threats as we see elsewhere, such as invasive species, unsustainable fishing and farming practices, and climate change then coming in and magnifying the negative impacts of, of those threats. However, what rewild sort of looks to do and what rewilding brings yeah, is a positive reframing for nature conservation. And rewilding involves holistic solutions to remove these barriers and reestablish vibrant wildlife populations and intact functional and resilient ecosystems that effectively integrate people. Um, international fishing boats are a menace. Uh, I would say that you know, any unsustainable fishing and overfishing, um, including illegal fishing, you know, is definitely a threat to these. So anywhere where you're decimating, you know, populations of wildlife, whether it be on land or in the sea, is going to have follow-on impacts. What are the results of uh, the actions Rewild has taken to on the Galapagos Islands? Yeah, so we've uh, only recently really come on the scene. And so as of last year, you know, we initiated uh, work with a suite of partners. And the way we work is we work through other organizations. So we work to be a catalyst for those organizations, helping bring funding as well as technical support and influence. And so our role is really to help those organizations get what they need to implement projects. 
projects some of that we've supported so far involve the creation of the Hermandad marine protected area, some 60,000 square kilometers of sea that's now protected in the northeast of the Galapagos and connects with the new reserves that we see in Costa Rica around Cocos. On Floriana Island, working with the community, the national park and other partners who have been implementing a project there to restore the entire island. This is one of the mo most important islands globally um, for removing invasive species and also protecting uh, more than 54 uh, species that otherwise are probably going to go extinct. What can, e species what can everybody do to help protect and restore biodiversity? Right, so some of the things that people can look to do themselves on this, you know, is really sort of bring about um, uh, some of the things that people can, can do themselves on this uh, is really looking to uh, either you know, plant trees locally, native flowering trees that will attract birds to their cities. Yeah. They can also work on, you know, uh, sorry, Monica Steen, let me pull up the, my notes on that one. It's okay. Uh, how do you prevent extinctions and restore ecosystems, for example? So the partners that we work with prevent, ex prevent extinctions and restore ecosystems through a suite of conservation actions that can involve uh, removing invasive species from islands and increasing the sustainability of farming and fishing operations uh, on there as examples. Um, why the wild is the solution to climate biodiversity and pandemic issues? We're in a global climate biodiversity and health crisis. And nature-based solutions like rewilding the Galapagos mitigate those climate impacts through being the most effective solution to taking carbon out of the atmosphere and regulating temperatures and weather worldwide. They also work to protect biodiversity and this creates resilient intact systems which continue to provide us with ecosystem services. Some of those, such as clean air, clean water, a key for our survival, a key for our health and the benefits uh, that occur from that. So pandemics like the one that we're experiencing are the result of unhealthy interactions with wildlife in our environment. The type of work we're trying to do is convert that and change that into healthy interactions with our environment. Still, there's people who maybe think that it doesn't matter what's happening in the Galapagos, it doesn't affect me because I live in some other place. Why is it important uh, to think about it? How is what's happening in the Galapagos affects me? Well, the Galapagos, you know, I mean, affects the economy of Ecuador. So if you're living in mainland Ecuador and you think that you might not be impacted, well, one of the main drivers for tourism turning up and, you know, going to Ecuador is to get to the Galapagos. And so where they stop off beforehand of getting there, that puts money into local economies and, and helps drive jobs and other things. And the pandemic, you know, I think really helped uncover uh, what some of those connections actually look like in the absence of tourism. How much money is needed to achieve the mission you have in Galapagos? So, so tourism brings around five, so anywhere between 500 million and a billion dollars to Galapagos and Ecuadorian economy overall. We've identified about $170 million worth of work uh, to do over the next 10 years of a suite of projects that would look to be rewilding the Galapagos Islands. If someone wants to help with money, how can they uh, reach rewild? How can they help? So donations can be made online directly to rewild. They can also be made directly to partners that are working on the ground in the Galapagos. Um, for rewild, we do not charge any overhead or other aspects and we're able to pass on our grants directly to partners on the ground. So feel free, 
free to uh, donate directly online straight through WAP. I've heard there's going to be a concert, Atlantis Concert for Earth, taking place in Portugal on July. Uh, important artists are contributing to the show. The Atlantis Concert for Earth is a concert that's put together by a group of musicians and others that really care about our planet. It'll be held in the Azores Islands in Portugal on the 22nd to the 23rd of July with a suite of bands in, including the Black Eyed Peas, for example. It's one example of how Rewild works collaboratively with celebrities and others you know, to really bring attention to the conservation solutions that need to be implemented to revitalize our planet. That would be a way to donate money, uh, raise money. Uh, I've heard the concert is taking place in, the, in a volcano. Yes, so it's held inside a volcano in a town uh, there in the Azores Islands. So like the Galapagos, there's a suite of volcanic uh, origin islands around the world. And this is another place where people live on islands. Um, and in that case, it's a volcanic uh, island out there. Con esto y más seguimos conversando con Carl, Camper, Carl Campbell luego de esta pausa. WCA, Vladimir Coca Asociados, su aliado estratégico en comercio exterior, con soluciones confiables para todo tipo de operaciones de la cadena logística nacional e internacional. Nuestra experiencia, sumada con las innovaciones tecnológicas que ofrecemos a nuestros clientes, dará un valor agregado que incrementa sus ganancias y les permite ser primeros en el comercio exterior. WCA, Vladimir Coca Asociados, su mejor alternativa en comercio exterior. Vive en el mejor proyecto urbanístico de San Borondón y disfruta con tu familia en un ambiente natural. Jardines Parque Magno es un conjunto habitacional que se caracteriza por brindar un ambiente de tranquilidad y confort, con áreas verdes y múltiples servicios orientados a la interacción con la naturaleza. Con alta plusvalía, el departamento de tus sueños cuenta con varias alternativas de diseño donde se han considerado todos los aspectos necesarios que requiere una urbanización de primer nivel, como vivir dentro de un gran resort. Vive naturalmente en San Borondón. Jardines Parque que magno. Estamos de regreso con más de portada hablando del trabajo de la organización Rewild de Leonardo DiCaprio, eh, específicamente en Galápagos, conversando con Carl Campbell hoy. Carl, Hello, yep, Carl. Smarty, Chris. Yes. Yep, great I would to be like back. to talk about uh, how Rewild works with partners, uh, the Ecuadorian government, and local communities uh, toward your goals here. Excellent. So, Rewild works uh, to really sort of, you know, as a catalyst uh, in this space. And so, what does that mean? That means that the work on the ground is done by our partners such as the Ecuadorian government, such as local uh, conservation NGOs. And what we look to do is we look to support them in different ways. And that can be through helping bring funds or direct other funders uh, to them. It can also be through bringing technical expertise and connections and also influence. And so through the voice of both Three Wild and some of our celebrity supporters, we can look to bring attention and voice to those groups on the ground. I know your main focus right now is in Floriana. Yes, that's correct. Uh, it's one of the focal projects that we have here in the Galapagos. So what are you doing in Floriana for people to understand what's the work there? So on Floriana Island, uh, there's a project underway that's being co-designed with the uh, Floriana community, uh, the Galapagos National Park, and the other conservation organizations that are involved. This is a very holistic project that really looks to improve livelihoods, 
and prevent the extinction of a whole suite of different species on the island while also reintroducing wildlife that's gone extinct on the island, such as the 13 species that, that we know about, which include Galapagos tortoises, Floriana mockingbirds, and other species. I've heard there's a, a predator control program to benefit the pink iguanas. So some of the work, other work that we're doing involves uh, actions to help support uh, preventing the extinction of pink iguanas. This involves the control of invasive species and also working to look to develop uh, field knowledge gaps, which may be needed if the Galapagos National Park decides to take other conservation actions in the future, such as head starting, which is where you might bring into captivity uh, young individuals and get them past the stage where they can uh, then thrive and be breeding in the wild. Why Rewild picked the Galapagos Islands for their work? So the Galapagos Islands you know, exemplifies you know, a suite of the types of, of work that Rewild uh, engages in. And the projects that are here you know, really have the potential uh, through the Galapagos as a platform to influence work elsewhere. And so really on this, you know, if we can't do it in the Galapagos, then we can't probably do these things elsewhere. With this, we think we can do it in the Galapagos and we can do it elsewhere. And so we're interested in taking work that we're seeing and uh, helping implement here in the Galapagos and taking that to scale globally. I know the fans are, are very grateful with Rewild's work and Mr. Leonardo DiCaprio's attention to the island and maybe they're wondering if he's coming anytime soon. Uh, Mary Chris, I'm not a, aware of any of his travel plans. Okay. Are any actions going to take place in the Galapagos uh, this year? Uh, there are a suite of actions. Um, some of these are sort of ongoing ones, such as the pink iguana work that you uh, mentioned. There's also work with uh, preventing the extinction um, and continuing work on the mangrove finch, uh, another species that's very critical uh, in terms of uh, uh, numbers and only one small population uh, being left. The work on Floriana is ongoing and the work on the Hermandad Reserve is continuing going on with developments of management plans and other activities towards uh, achieving a sustainable marine protected areas. That's a very important point, Hermandad. How are you helping them with their work? So we've helped support the uh, conservation NGOs, which have supported the government in terms of conducting engagements with uh, citizens out here in the Galapagos, as well as the fishing sector on the mainland. Um, we're now supporting with aspects related to developing the management plan, and we'll be continuing to support work with control and surveillance. Okay, thank you, Carl. Uh, I would like you to have a message for our, for our audience about uh, conservation and how they can help us. Yep. Uh, have a think about how you might be able to assist. You can assist in different ways. Maybe it's volunteering. Maybe you have a special skill set. Maybe you can donate. Um, have a think about these things. You know, what can you do locally? Can you be planting native trees? Can you be eating less meat? One of the major sources of deforestation in Latin America. Have a think about some of the actions that you can do and look to implement these. Thank you. Eh, eh, fue Carl Campbell, eh, director de las islas en Latinoamérica para Rewild, eh, la asociación eh, que lidera Leonardo DiCaprio para la conservación eh, y cuidado en Galápagos y en muchos otros puntos del mundo para la conservación ambiental. Soy María Cris Guevara y así nos despedimos hoy. Portada llegó gracias al auspicio de WCA, Vladimir Coca Asociados, su mejor alternativa en comercio exterior. Jardines Parque Magno, el proyecto urbanístico de mayor plusvalía en San Borondón.